Um, so 6.8, the problems um, that I'm about to do are going to be like graphs. So I'm just going to give you a few definitions first, and then we'll go into math lab on these. So they're going to talk about stuff called a relative maximum and a relative minimum. So a relative maximum, these are basically peaks in the, in the graph. So these are peaks that occur in the graph. And then we got the relative minimum. And y'all, those are like valleys that occur in the graph. We'll spell in there. So there are valleys that occur in the graph. Now, relative maximum and relative minimums don't mean they're the overall maximum of the graph or minimum. It's just they're the minimum for a peak that is occurring in our graph. Um, is it, are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I just had yes. one set of yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> All righty, that'll work. All righty, um, so we're just looking for peaks when they talk about the maximums and valleys when they talk about the minimum. Now, what they'll do, they're going to ask us the maximum value, and the maximum values are equal to the Y values, and... um. They'll ask us where it occurs at, and then that's where we give the X value. And then they'll end up with the increase and decrease that we've been doing. So I'm going to share the screen so we can see how these problems will look in MATLAB. All right, y'all. So I got my graph here. And on this one, they want to know... Um, Relative maxima or minima. So that's words for maximum and minimum. And the intervals on which it increases and decreases, which we've been doing already. So looking at the graph, you got a mountaintop or a peak. So that's telling us we got a relative maximum. So we click that. Then they say the relative maximum occurs at X equals... So we're going to get the X value for that. So let's see the X value that it's happening at. Looks like the X value of that vertex, which is 3.5. And then it has a value of, that's the Y value, which is 5.25. Now watch them, they switch the order up on that a lot of times. Sometimes they'll ask for the value, then the X. Sometimes they'll ask for the X first and then the value. Um, and But they're giving us that point, 3.5 comma 5.25. So y'all, once we put that in, we check that answer. Now, let's see how good y'all are on this increasing and decreasing. First, they want to know where the interval's increasing. So going left to right, that's where my graph is going uphill. So that's going to be the left side of that graph is increasing. So A, B, C, or D. And y'all, what you got to remember, since these graphs go forever, that's what that arrow's telling us, that means we're starting out here on the left, 
way out at the left at negative infinity. And as you cruise down the x-axis, it's going uphill until we get to where that peak is occurring at. We well, they gave us that x value. The x value of that peak was the 3.5. So we need to come in from negative infinity to the 3.5. So we will choose A. So remember, intervals of increase and decreasing, they want your starting x value and your ending x value. So knowing that, what is the, uh, I'll let y'all figure out, decreasing, is it going to be A, B, C, or D? Then y'all, that's just the right side of my graph going downhill. D? Oh, you said D is in dog? Is that what I heard? Yes. yes. All right, let me see my chat. So, so yeah, everybody's saying D, perfect, because D starts at that 3.5, which is the X value of that vertex. And as you go to the right, we're headed out towards infinity. All right, y'all, I'm going to do one more of these ones, because this one had a minimum and a maximum on it. So let me make this one bigger. All right, so yeah, sometimes they'll have a minimum and a maximum. So first, they want the relative maximum. Now notice, they want the value first of the maximum and then the X coordinate. We well, on that little hump on the left side of our graph is the maximum where it makes that little peak. And that point is at negative four, negative one. So the maximum value is the negative one. And then it occurs at the X value of negative four. So see, Walgoda gave me the X first and wanted the value. This one's sort of backwards. So y'all, we're going to check that, and then they're going to want that minimum. Well, the minimum is that little valley to the right side, and the point that that happens to have is a 2, negative 19. So remember, the relative minimum will be the negative 19, and it happened at an X value of positive Two. Now, let's see, continue. So now they should start asking us for the increasing and decreasing. So y'all, you got two intervals where this is increasing. So I'm looking at the answers, um, see what they got there. So the first increase will be the left, the first part of my graph, coming in from negative infinity, riding down the axis till we get to that negative four. So we got two possibilities, A and C. So I need to look at the second part where it's increasing, and that'll be the third section of the graph is going uphill. So y'all, that's starting at two on the x-axis and it's headed towards infinity. So let's see, we had negative infinity, negative four, and then two to infinity. So on that, since I had two pieces, it would be C. All right, y'all, didn't you check that answer? All right, hit continue. And decreasing is the middle section of the graph. Um, and it's sort of going downhill. It starts at the X value of, well, it's got to be that negative four on that peak. So it starts at that negative four and you're going down the X axis till you get to that second um, minimum point. 
and that had an X value of two. So this one went from what? Negative four to two. So B on that one. But y'all, if you notice, they all hook up. Up here, negative infinity to negative four was increasing. Then down here, negative four to two was decreasing. But then back up here, two to infinity was increasing. So all those X values are going to sort of hook together when you piece it all back together, okay? All righty, y'all. So let me go back to my pad now. So that was the new thing as far as the uh, graphing goes. And then if y'all remember the other day, the first few problems in 6.8, we dealt with piecewise functions. But all they wanted me to do was pick which equation I would use to evaluate it. Well, y'all, at the end of 6.8, they want us to actually find what the value is when we put the number in. So these ones will say for the piecewise function, find the values g of negative 4, g of a positive 4, and g of 7. All right, so there's what they're wanting me to do. Three problems, basically. Now, they're giving us g of x equals, and y'all, this one has two equations. We're going to use x plus 5 for any x's less than or equal to 4. Oh, right, y'all let one in real quick. It's going to equal 9 minus x for any x that is greater than 4. So if it equals 4 or less, we're going to use the first equation. If it's greater than 4, I'll use the second equation to find my value. So I'm going to start with g of negative 4. Well, y'all, g and negative 4, negative 4 is less than 4. So I'm going to use this equation, the x plus 5. But remember, in place of the x, I'm going to put my negative 4. So I get negative 4 plus 5. All right, solving that is basically 5 and negative 4 gives you a positive 1. So, y'all, then they said find g of 4. Well, g of 4, 4 is equal to 4. So, since 4 is either less than or equal to 4, I'm going to use the first equation again. And in place of the x, I'm going to put that 4 so that I get 4 plus 5. Y'all adding them together, 4 plus 5. Gives me nine. So the first two values I found use that first equation. But now I'm finding G of seven. Seven is greater than four. So since seven is greater than four, I'm going to use the second equation, which is nine minus my X. So that's going to be nine minus my seven. And y'all, that'll give me a final answer of positive two. All right, I'm going to do one more. Actually, there was just two at the end. So once again, for the piecewise function, Find the values. So this time they want 
There's four of them this time. H of negative 10. H of zero. H of one. And H of nine. So four values we're going to find on this one. And y'all, H of X has three equations. It equals negative five X minus 10 for any X less than negative three. It equals one four negative three less than or equal to x less than one. So negative three can equal x and make it true. And yet still less than one makes it true. So any number in between negative three, but less than one, it equals one. So there's no variable here. So whatever falls in this range, automatically equals one, sort of like salary pay, okay? Or that'd be like a constant line on that part of the graph. All right, it's going to equal X plus four for any X greater than or equal to one. So if it equals one, you use the last equation, not the second one, okay? So equal to one or greater, we'll use X plus four. So y'all gonna start with H of negative 10. So negative 10 is less than negative three. So I'm gonna use the first equation and put a negative 10 in for that X. So we got negative five times negative 10 minus 10. Okay. All righty, so that's going to give me a positive 50. Negative times negative is a positive 50 minus our 10. And y'all, that'll give us a final answer of 40. All righty. Next, we had H of zero. Well, zero is bigger than negative three and it's less than one. And we said anything equal to or greater than negative three, but less than one equals one. So automatically that just equals one and you're done. Next, H of one. Well, let's see, I can't use this one because this says X has to be less than one. So I'll look at the third one. It says it can equal one or be greater than one. So anything that equals one or greater uses the last equation. So I'm gonna put a one in for that X and I get one plus four, which gives us five. And y'all, finally, we had H of nine. Well, H of nine, nine is greater than one. So I'm going to use the last equation again. Put a nine in for the X. So I get nine plus four, which is 13. So they're going to give you three or four values to find. Go by your domain to see which equation you're using on these, okay? Your number will either be less than negative three, equal to negative three, but less than one, or greater than one, okay? Or equal to or greater than one. All righty, y'all, so that takes us into 5.4. The last material for test one. So let me get us ready. Now, 5.4 is just using one formula that we call the difference quotient. 
Now, the section is called Complex Rational Expressions. Remember, rational numbers are your fractions. Now, we're going to look at what we call the difference quotient. Now, they give you this formula pretty much on all the problems, so you don't really have to memorize it. But what this is is a slope formula that you can use to find the slopes of curvy lines like our parabolas and stuff. Um, but I'm not going to get deep into it. I'm just going to show you how to plug into the formula and find the, the simplified version. If you take calculus or business calculus, you'll probably use this formula and they'll get more deep into it. So the formula is F of X plus H minus f of x all over h. So the steps to um to simplifying, because they're going to say uh construct and simplify. So the steps to construct and simplify. Well, the first thing, they're going to give us f of x, and this h is always in the formula on the bottom. So what we got to find first is what is this uh, f of x plus h going to give us? So we find f of x plus h. Now, what that means is the original f of x they give us, in place of the x is we're going to put x plus h. Okay, and then we'll work that out and get what this f of h, x plus h will give us. Um, second, once I got f of x plus h, I'm going to plug that into the formula with the f of x all over h. So we're going to plug everything into the formula. Next, what we'll have on top, this f of x plus h stuff minus f of x stuff, we're going to combine like terms on top. Now, here's the thing. The second f of x stuff will be subtracted. So remember, when we drop those parentheses, we got to distribute that negative, okay? So we're going to combine like terms on top after dropping parentheses. And distributing the subtraction. Now, y'all, what's nice at this point, all the terms... Without an H will cancel out. That means all that's going to be left after combining like terms is H stuff on top. Now remember, I still got that H on bottom. So what we do, since we got all these H's on top being divided by H, we simplify the result. by dividing all terms on top by the H on the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you the trickiest part on these problems once I start getting on my second or third problem is going to be finding that f of x plus h. That's the trickiest part on these usually. Um, 
The rest of the simplifying, not too bad, okay? So y'all, let me get us on one of these. This first problem says, for f of x equals 6x minus 4, construct and simplify the difference quotient. And they'll give you the formula. F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. Now, we know F of X, 6X minus 4. That'll be going into second parentheses. So remember, the first thing we got to do is find F of X plus H. So f of x plus h, I'm going to take f of x and replace that x with x plus h. So I'll have 6 times x plus h minus 4. So f of x plus h looks like f of x. You got a 6 times the x minus 4. Now, we got to finish simplifying this by getting rid of these parentheses. So we distribute to 6. So 6 times x is 6x. Six, 6 times h is a positive 6h. And then at the end is my minus 4. So I can't go any further. I don't have any like terms. So this is what I'm about to put into the formula for f of x plus h. So y'all now plug into the formula. Now I always started out with parentheses and I put my h on the bottom. So to replace the f of x plus h, we're putting this in, 6x plus 6h, Minus 4. That's minus my f of x. Well, f of x they gave me, that is 6x minus 4. All right, y'all. So now we're going to combine like terms on top by dropping these parentheses and distributing that negative. So I get 6x plus 6h minus 4. So dropping parentheses does not affect the first um, polynomial. But right here, minus times a positive makes that a negative 6x. And then that negative times that negative makes that a positive 4 all over my h. Now, y'all, look on top. Do we got things that are going to cancel? Because we said up here, all the terms without an H are going to cancel out. We all look at this. You got a positive 6X and a negative 6X. Those 6Xs are going to cancel out. Uh, let's see. This negative 4 and this positive 4, they're going to cancel out. So notice, all that's left on top is a 6H. On bottom is a H. So can y'all simplify that even further? Because y'all, something's about to cancel. Because remember my last step, it said, simplify this result by dividing all terms by the H on the bottom. Well, y'all, if you take that H and divide by that H, they cancel out. So on this problem, my final answer is a positive six. Now, if you remember, this is Y equals MX plus B form of a line right here. And the slope is always in front of the X. Well, the slope is a six. And remember, I said this fancy formula finds the slope. 
And look at that. That slope is a six. So it always ain't going to work into a single number like that. But when it's a straight line like this, it will, okay? So, y'all, let's have some more fun on some more challenging ones. All right, y'all, so let me pull the. Now, there's five altogether. The second one is just like the first one, so I'm going to jump down to the third one and do this one. This one says 4 f of x equals x squared plus 1. Construct and simplify. And I'm just going to put the formula. F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. Whoops, my camera's down. All right, y'all, there you go. So this one has a squared term. So watch ha what happens here. Because remember, the first thing I'm going to do is find f of x plus h. We all take this f of x and put an x plus h in front of that, in place of that x. So that's going to give you an x plus h squared plus 1. So your trouble on this one is going to be figuring out what does x plus h squared. And a good thing to do on the side, once we figure out what this equals, it'll equal that every single time if we get an x squared, okay? So let's play with that. x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h. Now, I'm just going to leave everything in uh, alphabetical order when I do the like term stuff, okay? So, x times x is x squared. x times h is a hx. Now, I do the inside. h times x is another hx. And then h times h is a h squared. And y'all, you would add these like terms. So bring down the x squared. 1hx plus 1hx gives you 2hx plus bring down your h squared. So anytime you get an x plus h squared, you're going to replace it with that right there. So this will equal x squared plus 2h x plus h squared and y'all that replaced the x plus h squared but at the end i still got a plus one now look here none of these are like terms so this is as far as i can go on f of x plus h so now i'm going to plug everything into the formula my f of x plus h minus my f of x all over my h. All right, so let's put stuff in. x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus 1. f of x they gave me was x squared plus 1. All that's over H. Now, I'm wanting y'all to see that every time I do this, everything in the second parentheses is going to cancel out. All that's going to be left is this H stuff, okay? So let me drop parentheses so the first one don't change. Distributing that negative, I get a negative X squared. And then negative times positive makes that a negative 1 all over H. Y'all, look, X squared, negative X squared. They're canceling. Uh, positive 1, negative 1. 
they're canceling. Everything in the second parentheses will always cancel, okay? But look here, I got two things on top. I got 2hx plus h squared divided by h. Now, y'all, here's the thing. You got to divide both of these by the h. So you're going to have a 2hx divided by h plus h squared divided by h. We'll look in the first one. Those H's cancel. So all that's left is a 2X. Well, right here, remember, H squared is the H times the H. So if that was written as the H times H, one H would cancel, leaving you one H. Also, y'all think about it this way. Since this H don't have an exponent, you would treat it like a one and two minus one leaves me one H. So you can subtract the exponents to cancel those H's, okay? But y'all, this is the final answer, two X plus H. So since this is a parabola, it depends where you are on that X axis to find the slope. Righty, so that's even funner, right? So let me ask y'all on this. Now, the main thing, save that, because y'all, every single problem where they got an X squared plus one, there's your X squared, the X plus H squared right there. So save that for sure. All right, y'all, questions on that. And... All right, so let's try another one with some X squared stuff. Uh, let me see here. So y'all, this one, they're saying four F of X equals a negative five X squared plus nine X plus two. We're going to construct and simplify. or f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, my f ain't looking too effy there. All righty. Oh, y'all, look how fun this is going to be. We got two x's on this one. So first, I'm going to find f of x plus h. But y'all, this one has two x's. So you're going to come down and go negative 5 times x plus h squared plus 9 times x plus h plus 2. So two x's, we got to put this in twice. Now I know what x plus h squared is. We did that up here. So I'm going to come in and do negative 5 and replace x plus h squared with what we got while go. x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And y'all, I'm just going to bring everything else down. Because now I'm going to distribute the negative 5 through this parentheses and the nine through this parentheses. Ooh, we about to have a lot of stuff running across the page. So negative five X squared. Negative five times two is negative 10 H X. Negative five times H squared is a negative five H squared. Now distribute the nine. Nine times X is nine X. 9 times H is 9H. And then at the end is our positive 2. Now, I'll tell you what's sad about this. I don't see any like terms. So I got X squared, HXs, H squared, Xs, Hs, and 2. So that does not simplify further. 
So that's going to be our f of x plus h. And then we'll put in our f of x, all of that over our h. All right, y'all, so let me plug stuff in. So negative 5x squared minus 10hx minus 5h squared plus 9x plus 9h plus 2. Now, f of x was a negative 5x squared plus 9x plus 2. Now, here's what I do if I don't want to <laughs> write all this again. Remember, everything on this side is going to cancel with its counterpart over here. Because remember, that negative negative is really making that a positive 5x squared. Um, so you can cancel them out right here as it looks, okay? But I'm going to write all this out again and then cancel. So negative 5x squared minus 10hx minus 5h squared plus 9x plus 9h plus 2. All right, negative times negative makes that a positive 5x squared. Negative times positive is a negative 9x. And then negative times positive is a negative 2, y'all, all over that H. So now I wanted y'all to see that it's really canceling negative 5x squared, 5x squared. Uh, what I got a negative 9x. So that positive 9x and that negative 9x. And then this negative 2 and this positive 2 cancel out. So once again, I got three things left, but they all have a H. So I got a negative 10hx minus 5h squared plus 9h all over h. So y'all, tell me the final answer here. Oh, y'all are so quiet tonight, but watch this. The H is canceled on the first term, so all that's left is a negative 10X minus 5. Well, here you had an H squared over an H. So remember, 2 minus 1 leaves 1H. One Plus, well, here you had a 9H over an H. Those H's cancel leaving the nine. So the moral of the story is when you're dividing by this H, you're taking one H away from everybody. And y'all, that does not simplify further. So final answer. So this is probably the longest problem you'll have because of the two X's here, okay? All right, question on that one. Now, y'all ain't gonna lie. Y'all's are going to be really similar. Um, they might change that five and nine and two up, but the problem will be just like mine, other than the numbers. Okay. All right, y'all. Well, I got one more. So, any questions yet? All righty. So, let me try. Our last one. Now, y'all, I will say this. Um, the one I just did, they really love to put this one on the test, and you'll see this one on the final exam that looks like this one, okay? So they love, so put your star by that, because you'll see that one a whole lot more, okay? All righty, so this one says 4f of x equals 4x to the third. 
Oh, we're happy. There's only one X on this one. Um, construct and simplify. F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. So guess what? The first thing we're going to do, we're going to find F X plus H. Oh, but there's only one X we got to worry about. So that'll give us four times X plus H to the third. Well, y'all, guess what? I'm going to go to the side and see what that equals. X plus H to the third. Now, whatever we get here, y'all can use for y'all's X plus H to the thirds, okay? Because we're all going to have this kind of problem. Now, this will be x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Three of them since this is a cube. So, y'all, I'm going to bring down the first x plus h. I already know what two of these equal. Two of those will equal x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Because we pulled these out while ago to get that. So now we got to distribute the x times all three of these and then the h times all three of these. So doing the x first, x times x squared is the x cubed. x times 2hx is a 2hx squared. So I'm basically adding the x to everybody. And then x times h squared is the h squared x. So now do the same thing with the h. h times x squared is the h x squared. h times 2hx is a 2h squared x. And y'all, that h times h squared is a h to the third. Now, this one does have like terms, so bring down the x to the third. Two of these hx squareds will add to this one hx squared and give me three hx squareds. Right here, this x squared h. I mean, this h squared x here will add to two h squared x's and give me three h squared x. And y'all find me at the end is our h to the third. So y'all save that right there. So when you got to have your x plus h cubed, you're going to replace it with this. So that'll be four times x to the third plus three h x squared plus three h squared x plus h to the third. So replace x plus h to the third with all of this in your last step. Distribute that four to all four of these. Whew. You thought just having one X, it'd be a lot simpler, but we, whew, it would have been if we didn't have to cube this thing, okay? All right, so multiplying by four, I get four X to the third. Four times three is 12 H X squared. Four times three is 12 H squared X. And then four times H cubed is the four H cubed. So y'all ain't gonna lie on this one. The most work is doing all this foiling, okay? So now we're gonna plug it in. F of X plus H minus F of X 
all over H. All right, y'all, so let me plug this in. 4x to the third, 12hx squared, 12h squared x, and then 4h to the third. F of x was only 4x to the third. So it looks like, now this one, since I only got one thing here, I'm just going to cancel it out. This is a negative 4x to the cubed. We'll cancel with a 4x to the third. So the three things I got left all have h's. So 12hx squared plus 12h squared x plus 4h to the third all over h. Oh, so what I'll do is I'll be done when one of y'all can tell me this final answer. Would it be 12HX? No, that's wrong. But well, you're on the right path. Well, it's actually going to cancel with this H. Really? But I thought the HX was squared. These no. H's are going to cancel, right? Is it 12X squared plus 12HX plus 4H squared? Oh, look at that. So is that H on the 12 not squared? It's just the X? It's just the X. Okay. Uh, okay. Now see the second one, the second one had the H squared, but not the X. So it is just H. No, it's just the H. And okay, it's okay. only the H here, only the X here, and then only the H on that last one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And good job. That's all you're doing is just dividing everybody. You're taking away one H on those at that point. Um but y'all, I ain't going to lie, the trickiest part on these is getting this f of x plus h stuff. Now, y'all to be similar to mine, it might not be a 4 there, but it's going to work out the same way we did here. So remember, save this for your cubes, and then the one we did on the page before, save that for your um, x squared stuff. And if you save those, um, that saves you a lot of work on uh, the three trickier problems on here, okay? Because two of them are going to have the x plus h squared. And then that last one, that number five you do, is going to have the x plus h cubed on it, okay? But y'all are not too bad. You just got to, woo, keep up with stuff. And, and remember, everything in the second parentheses always cancels out 100%. All that's going to be left has to have only H's in. It can have X's, but they all got to have at least one H in them, okay? So that when we divide by that H, it's taking care of that, and it's no longer looking like a fraction, okay? It's looking like a polynomial. Um, yeah, and that's that, y'all. So that's all the material for test two. So we come back, what, so what I'm thinking about doing, Monday, we're going to review test two. And then that Wednesday, I think we got to do uh, two small sections, like eight one and eight two, I think they are. Um, but this test is showing due for, uh, it's due like 317. So what I'll do, because I really want y'all to get good on your review, I'm thinking about extending this due date for test two because the next week is spring break. So I'll see what y'all want to do Monday. See how y'all feel about that. Um, but like I said, if I need to, I can put a due date on test two for like uh, the 24th, which would be the end of spring break, okay? So we'll just see how y'all feel. 
So we got next week review and in, in the eight one eight two stuff. The week after spring break starts the uh eighteenth through the twenty something, and then we'll return back on the twenty fifth of March. Okay. All right, y'all. So I'll stop that. Um, any questions? <laughs>